Hello learners. In this lecture, we will see how each element of the building has to be detailed. So first we'll begin with the footing. So we'll be trying to get a overall, a general view of this. That's it, right? Yeah. So let me try to delete this. Yeah. Okay. So uh, we have a, uh, you know, a foundation here. We'll try to see the load, uh, the load coming on that. So quickly I'll go to this option. And here I'll say FZ and let be, let this mean tabulated form. And I'm looking for the load combination of 1.5 dead load plus SIDL plus live load, right? And I'll say, uh, and also along with that, along with FZ, let me click on MX and MY and I'll say apply to that, right? Now, can you see here, these are the loads that is coming on this particular building, right? So we have a, a force of 333 kilonewton. I have force of 307 kilonewton. I have force of 1145 kilonewton. 1282, uh, 797 and 878, right? Along with that, we have moment in X direction and moment in Y direction. Now, how do you design a footing for that? Now, for this, what we do, we prepare a Excel sheet and based on that Excel sheet, we'll come to a conclusion for this particular load, what size of footing is required. So out of this, I'll take one small, I'll take one value out of this to explain this. So let us consider, this is the size of the footing that I want to prepare for the load of 1282. Right. So what I'm going to do, I'll go to the Excel sheet. Okay. And I'll go to the Excel sheet. And here, this is the Excel sheet for the isolated footing. So what is the load we were getting? The load that I'm getting is 1,282. Let me consider this to be 1,285. It's okay if you consider it on a higher side. So I'll apply the load here. That is 1,285. Right. Yeah. Once that is done, it's going to ask me what is the moment in X direction and moment in Y direction. Go back to that. So the moment in next direction is negligible. It's zero here and it is 27 here. You can try to input the same in the X. You can put it as zero and in the Y you can put it as 27, right? And it's going to ask me what is the column size over that? We assume the column size to be 230 by 450 everywhere. So I'll put 230 by 450. Now SBC stands for safe bearing capacity. Let us assume this to be 150 kilonewton. So for this particular load, I require, I need to put a uh, footing size of 6.2, I mean, uh, area required is 6.28 square meter. So to satisfy this, let me try with a 3 meter by uh, 2 meter size of a footing. So if I put a 3 meter by 2 meter size of footing, I'm getting area required is 6, area provided. We need to provide 6.28. So what is happening? I'm getting a warning, change the footing dimension. So instead of 3 meter by 2 meter, let me go for 3 meter by 2.5 meter, right? So what will happen? This is okay because I require a 6.28. I'm providing a 7.50 meter and the footing size is okay. Now coming to the depth of the footing. So for the depth, I'll start from this point. That is my depth. Let us start from a 400 mm is the depth of my footing. And let me check here. So it's come, I'm getting a warning here. Increase the depth, increase the depth and increase the depth, right? So from 400, let me jump to 500 and let me try to see that. Again, I'm getting a warning, increase depth here. One way shear check is okay and two way shear check is okay. So from 500, let me jump to 550, not 600. We'll try to see it. Again, I'm getting a warning, increase the depth. So let me go to 600 now. Yeah, so now it's okay. One way shear check is okay. One way shear check is okay. One way shear check is okay. I mean, two way shear check is okay. That's That means for that particular load of 1000, what was the load we were getting? one two eight five and three meter by two point five meter and six hundred that means for this particular load of one two eight five for this particular load okay of one two eight five i need to provide a footing size of three meter by two point five meter let this be three meter by two point five meter and the depth of my footing has to be 600 mm this is this is designed by me now Coming to the reinforcement, how much reinforcement I need to provide? Again, for that, what I need to do, I need to come here. I need to provide 997 mm square of steel in X direction and 650 mm square along the Y direction. So what I'm going to do, I'll be providing a 16 diameter bar at 125 center to center spacing both direction. I'm getting 1680. 1680 but my requirement is only 19997 so i'm providing more reinforcement let me try to reduce this inst instead of 16 diameter let me make use of 12 diameter and let me make use of 12 diameter on both the side 
and now I need to require 993 and 653 but I'm getting 905 so this 905 is less than 993 so I'm getting a warning here this is not sufficient so I'll try to decrease the spacing from 125 to 100 mm to 100 mm on both the side is that okay now yeah this is okay now so instead of this also no you can make this as 150 also it's okay if you do that right we require 653 i'm providing a 754 it is okay i require 993 i'm providing 1131 square meter uh, mm square and this is sufficient now along the x direction what i'm gonna do along the x direction i'll provide a steel in this way okay i'm drawing a section here in this way let us say i'm providing a 12 diameter bar at 100 mm center to center spacing and along the y direction that is along this direction whatever steel i'm going to provide in my footing that will be 12 diameter but the spacing will be 150 center to center spacing right because i got it as 150 so in this way you have to design your footings right i explained for one footing you have to do it for other footings as well right so based on the load coming here we are going to design each footing here right similarly we uh, we have to do the designing for the beams as well so for the beams what i need to do i need to go to design concrete frame design and say start design check and we'll take one beam from here okay uh, let me consider one small beam i'll be taking this beam i'll take this beam so what so here this is the area of steel that is required this is in top portion this is in bottom portion so we'll take that so here I require 158 mm square in middle so I require 158 mm square and at the side side I require 304 mm square of the steel. So we know that if I'm providing a 10 diameter bar I'm covering 78 mm square of the steel. If I'm providing a 12 diameter bar I'm providing I'm covering 113 mm square of the steel. And if I'm providing a 16 diameter bar I'm providing I'm covering 201 mm square of the steel area so my requirement is 158 158 and 304 so what i can do this 158 can be satisfied by using two bars of 12 diameter because if you use one bar of 12 diameter you are satisfying 113 mm square but if i provide two bars of 12 diameter 113 plus 113 comes out to be 226 we require only 158 we are providing 226 mm square but we are providing little more only it is no problem so what i'm gonna do I'll provide two bars. I'll write in this way. This is my steel, okay? So I'll write here two bars of 12 diameter, right? But here the requirement is 304. By providing two bars of two uh, two bars of 12 diameter, I'm satisfying only 226 area. But my requirement is 304. So what is the remaining amount? So 304 minus 226. If I do try to do this manually, if I do 304 minus 226. I'm left with 78, 78 mm square, okay? And this 78 mm square can be satisfied by providing one bar of 10 diameter. So near this corner, no, only in this portion I require. I'll put one more bar in this way, okay? And I'll say provide one bar of 10 diameter, okay? So in this way, I'm going to do the detailing of my beams. I explained for one beam. Similarly, you have to try to do it for all other beams. And I've explained only for the top portion, you have to do it for the bottom portion as well, right? The concept remains the same. Whatever is the area you are getting here, based on that, these things has to be satisfied, okay? Yeah. Now, similarly, let me try to do it for uh, columns as well. I'll try to delete everything. So for the columns, what you need to do? For the columns, you have to select all the columns. To select all the columns, I'll go to select. I'll go to select object type. Let me go to the option called columns and select it. Then I'll close it. Then I'll put this in show selected objects only. And let me put this in the 3D format. Now you can see here, these are the steel requirement. Let me delete the grid line. If you want to delete, the, if you want to remove the grid line, click on control D the grids will be disappeared and now if you see here no you can see what is the area i'm getting here everywhere 828 828 828 828 similarly if you come here here i'm getting area of 491438422582828 and 912 so these are the different area of steel what we are getting here now how do you provide the steel in the column i'll do it for one simple thing 
yeah since we don't have much time i'll concentrate on this particular column so i need to satisfy 828 828 828 828, 828. that means this is my plinth level ground floor level first floor second floor third and fourth right so this 828 mm square of the steel is required again the same logic holds good what we have done right so what i can do i can provide four bar of 16 diameter right because i know one bar of 16 diameter can cover 201 mm square of the steel if i'm providing a four bar how much it comes out to be 201 into four is what what you need to do so 201 201 into four it comes out to be 804 but again we are falling short by another 24 mm square so what i can do is that instead of this i can make use of we have to go with odd number we have to go with even number like four bar six bar eight bar we cannot provide five bar seven bars in the column it has to be uh, you know equal number so instead of providing uh, four bars of 16 diameter i'm getting 804 mm square right so what i can do let me add another two bars of what i can do is i can provide six bars of 16 diameter let me try to do that if i provide six bar of 16 diameter 201 into six is what 201 into six is what i need to do so it comes out to be 1206 1206 but my requirement is only 828 that means i'm providing more steel so the better option is that provide four bar of 16 diameter and two bar of 12 diameter you can go with this combination so if i do that four bar of 16 diameter 201 into four this will give me 804 plus one bar of 12 diameter will cover 113 uh, 2 bar will be 113 plus 113 226 so it comes out to be 1030 and it is okay we require 828 but i'm providing 1030 and it is okay so what i'm going to do i'll provide a steel here of 4 bars of 16 diameter plus 2 bars of 12 diameter in this particular column from ground floor that is from plinth level from plinth to top floor everywhere this is the steel that i'm going to produce okay so this is the steel that i'm going to provide so in this way you have to do the detailing of your columns right so I, i'll show you the section how it has to be done so this is my column section uh, this is uh, 450 what we have put and this is 230 so i need to provide four bars of 16 diameter that's 16 diameter four bar i'll put in corners in this way two three and four and for uh, 12 diameter bar, let me make use of a different color. And my middle bar will be 12 diameter 2 bar. So this is my 2 bars of 16 diameter, uh, sorry, 12 diameter. And this is what you have now. So these are my 4 bars of 16 diameter. 16 diameter. 4 bars of 16 diameter. So in this way, the detailing of your beams, the columns will be done. Right? And also the footings will be done. Right? So I hope uh, these things are you're able to understand all these things. Again, there is a lot of theory to this. Again, there are a lot of things in this. Okay, but since we are running out of time, and these are a few things what I wanted to tell. Right, in this way you can try. You can take this as a kind of assignment. Try to do it for this. Let me clear everything. I'll clear everything. Try to do it for this. What you can do? No, let me quickly try to. Yeah, you take it as an assignment and try to uh, prepare a steel for this particular thing we are getting here 3197 6002 4626 2807 1104 and 1159 for this try to take the maximum of that so out of this the maximum is 6002 try to design the steel for 6002 and you can try to provide it everywhere but again it will become uneconomical so in that case you have to divide it what i'm trying to tell is yeah so instead of that what you have to do up to this level no up to this level that is ground floor uh, plinth level first and second floor try to take 6002 okay 6002 and try to design the steel for that and from here to the top try to take the maximum out of this three that is 2807 try to design the steel for this right but make sure the number of number of uh, rebar that you're getting in the ground floor and from up to the second floor and from second to the top floor has to be same let us say here you have provided uh, let us say six bars of 16 diameter and four bars of 12 diameter okay so six plus four is you're getting totally 10 bars but when you try to design it for this from for 2807 right 
2870 here also you have to make sure you're using 10 di 10 bars only let the diameter change and obviously the diameter will change since your area of steel requirement is less so here let us say you are provided making use of six bars of 12 diameter okay and uh, let us say you're making use of uh, four bars of 10 diameter usually 10 diameter we don't use in column but let us say i'm using uh, uh, four bars of 10 diameter so six plus four is ten six plus so in this way you have to try to keep the same number of bars let the diameter change okay instead of this you can provide 10 bars of 12 diameters also 10 bars of 12 diameter is also possible you can try to do that so in this way you have to do the detailing of the column right yeah so i hope uh, these things are understood up to here uh, in the next lecture uh, we'll try to see how the uh, practical drawings are prepared for these things right so we'll see you back in the next lecture thank you